in this video is, is try and answer this very simple question, right? So the exercise is pretty simple. We are given a data set and we would like to compare total, this is a variable total, between buyers and non-buyers within winning postcodes. So if you're a buyer, then that variable buyer equals to zero. And if you're a, sorry, equal to one, if no, no buyers is equal to so really my first task is to try and load the data set, okay? That will be my first task. So I don't have any data set here, so I'm gonna have to go to Stata, and I'm gonna say to open. I'm gonna go to my MG205 file, and I'm gonna find this lottery prices and peer effects. Note, sometimes people try to go and open the file by itself, which is natural, because you're used with like Word or Excel, you find the file, and you click it, it opens up. Quite frequently, that doesn't happen because your operating system doesn't recognize that as a Stata file, for example, okay? So what you frequently have to do is you have to open the data file from the um, Stata. If I describe the data, let me describe them. Well, look, there's a lot of them, right? Huge number of variables. What am I interested in? So let's go here and say, let's keep, keep only the variables of interest. Uh, this is actually, quite simple, keep, and you write the variables. Let me actually do this on Stata. So I want to do keep uh, win code buyer and total. These are the only variables I'd like to keep. Nice, look at this. I only have three variables. So now my data set is a lot less messy. Agree? If I browse it, I only have the three variables that I want. Let me do a little bit more. Let's say I want to keep if my win code is equal to one. Can I do that? Of course I can, because I only want to focus on, let's read the question again. I want to focus on within winning postcode, the difference of total between buyers and non-buyers, okay? So if I summarize, for example, my variables, I have um, win code 700 observation, buyer 700 observation, total I have 614 observations, so some, some buyers didn't tell us how much they spend, okay. I actually have the mean of total and standard deviations of all of those, but they're not, they're not dissected by if something or whatever. So I can actually do something like mean, let's say total if buyer equals to one. Can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. Mean total if buyer equals to zero. Okay, well, I'm already noticing a difference. So people who bought the lottery and hence won the lottery are spending more. Is this expected? Well, they won the lottery, right? So I should expect that they, you know, perhaps they want more. But I want something more. I, I don't want just to see the difference between them. I'd also like to be able to say whether it is statistically significant or not. Do you have anything that does this for you? Of course you do. Think about differences in means. What accomplishes differences in means? If you remember from your dummy variable videos, if you look at your dummy variable videos, it is dummy variables that accomplish these differences in means. So really what, what you have to do is regress total. Okay, you want to regress total variable on what? On buyer. Simple as that. I'm going to regress my total variable on buyer, which means that the constant is going to give me the expenditure of someone who did not buy the lottery. That is the meaning of this coefficient. 1025. I go here, 1025. In fact, this number here is exactly this number here because that's how the estimation of coefficients of dummy variables work. What about this 155 that I calculated? Well, this is simply the difference between these two. This is exactly the difference between these two. Okay, well, fair enough you might say, 155 is really the difference, but now I have an advantage. Is this difference statistically significant? The T statistic already tells me that. This T is relatively small, 
So what I can conclude is that at a 5% significance, or even at a 10% significance, that's the p-value, this difference is not statistically significant under my classical maintained assumptions, if, if you like. Okay, That's one way of doing it. Is it the only way? Of course not. Stata is a very evolved software, so it realizes that you might have to do this. So let me repeat this one more time. I can take this one more time and I say I don't want to save it, I don't care about the data loss. So what I've done now is I've uploaded again the data set with the whole data and I could have just done exactly this by just saying t-test total if win code equal to one by buyer. I could have done just this test right here without needing to polish any data, sort any data, drop any data, filter any data, nothing of that state I could do that in the background for me. So if I did this, well, lo and behold, I get exactly the same things. Right? If I look at this number here, is exactly what I got in the regression right here. If I look at this 155, is exactly this difference that I see here. What's the advantage of doing this t-test command rather than doing the regression? is that it will also give you the p-values for not just the two-tailed test, because remember by default the regression, this p-value, is for the two-tailed test. Notice three digit, here it's four digit, so actually the, it's a bit more precise, but it's the same thing. But you could also do hypothesis testing. So let's look at all the elements of this t-test, because uh, if you look at the do file that Jordi provides for this, for this um, empirical exercise, you see lots of t-tests. 90% of the code is just t-tests. And I just want to um, make sure that you're comfortable with this t-test, that you're not, that you realize what's really going on. Zero people were not buyers. So people that were not buyers, there were 426 of them. This is their mean spending. This is the standard DV, standard error, estimated standard error for that particular um, mean spending. Same thing for the second group. I do the difference I do the difference between the difference between the groups. I calculate the standard error of the difference. I divide this by the standard error. I get the t statistic. Well, this t statistic here is exactly the same as this t statistic here. The only difference is the minus sign, okay? Because of the definition of the groups, but it should shouldn't worry you at all. This h naught is that the difference is less than zero, or in other words, that the non-buyers non -buyers spend less than the buyers. Well, it seems like this, I would have been able to reject the null at, let's say, 11% significance level. Right? But I'm not able to reject it here because my p-value is 10.33, so at a, at a common 5% or 10% significance level, right? I would fail to reject the null for each of the different alternative hypotheses. Okay. And that's pretty much on how to do these t-tests on, on, uh, on Stata. You could have also done exactly the same thing by saying regress total buyer if win code equal to 1. So you didn't have to do any dropping or anything of that sort. You could have just instructed Stata to only focus on a particular subset of your data. Okay. So exactly the same numbers again. Um, again, I didn't throw any of my variables or anything of that sort. It's generally a bad practice to throw your variables, especially because you're, you, you might accomplish one task and then you realize, oh, I need to do more stuff. Okay. Um, so, so with that, I conclude this bit here.